Welcome to my analysis of The Woodpile by Robert Frost. Now you should have read this poem before you watched the video, but to give you a very surface level basic reminder of what happens in the poem, it follows a man who walks through a frozen swamp, lost, and he considers turning back, but doesn't in curiosity of what he f might find in this uncharted territory. A small bird flies ahead of him and interacts with him cautiously. The man dismisses this bird though when he finds a decaying wood pile, which is much more interesting to him because he can't fathom who would make such a pile and then leave it to rot without getting use out of it. Now let's go more in depth and look at the poem line by line. Out walking in the frozen swamp one grey day, I paused and said, I will turn back from here. No, I will go on farther and we shall see. The first line establishes the setting of this poem. It's a frozen swamp and it's grey, which probably means it's all foggy and mysterious. And I think this really gives across the sense of a fairy tale type setting. Then the next two lines cover what the speaker is thinking, why they're walking through here, and they show this urge to get thoroughly lost. A curiosity as to where they will end up, and a disregard for making it back home. The last three words we shall see create mystery and suspense to make us keep reading. The hard snow held me, save where now and then one foot went through. The view was all in lines, straight up and down of tall slim trees, too much alike to mark or name a place by, so as to say for certain I was here or somewhere else. I was just far from home. The snow holding him is personification, and again it's quite comforting and in a way magical, but this is immediately undermined by the fact that the snow is hard, giving an image of stubbornness and unfriendliness, reinforced by the fact that one foot went through, so in the end it seems quite untrustworthy, and the speaker's surroundings are a little bit threatening, a little bit you don't really know what you might find, and again, Far From Home has fairy tale connotations as well. And I think this all builds up to the sense of an adventure or a journey that the narrator is on. A small bird flew before me. He was careful to put a tree between us when he lighted, and say no word to tell me who he was, who was so foolish as to think what he thought. He thought that I was after him for a feather, the white one in his tail, like one who takes everything said as personal to himself. One flight out sideways would have undeceived him. Now we're introduced to the character of the small bird, and this could be seen as the guide in the narrator's adventure, because he is personified with he was careful. He also is personified when he says that he said no word. So the bird is not singing, which creates a sense of mystery and unease. The narrator is quite cold towards this bird. He says that he's foolish for thinking that the narrator will threaten him. And this is quite interesting because earlier he said he will go on and we shall see what will come next. So that was quite curious. Yet the bird is utterly uninteresting to him. The bird is also seen as paranoid. And this could be a projection of the narrator's own fear going on this unknown journey. And this seems likely given that his judgment of the bird as one who takes everything as said as personal to himself applies to him too, because he just assumes that the bird is thinking about him and is afraid of him instead of just happening to go in front of him. So the last line undercuts this journey guide illusion quite unromantically, saying that the bird was deceived in imagining that the narrator was following him. So I think this all gives the sense that the narrator is on an adventure, he is on a journey, but he is sort of in control of it. He is not just a victim to whatever happens around him. He's like, oh right, this bird is trying to be my guide. Well, no, that's not happening. Like, I'm controlling this adventure. And this plays into the whole theme of the poem about... The poem is a lot about um, what's going on in the narrator's head. It's not necessarily what's going on sort of in reality, like objectively. It's more about how the narrator is interpreting that. So we'll go into that a lot more later. But I think that's the purpose of him disregarding the bird. It's like, things are happening outside, but the only thing that's important are the things that I pay attention to. Finally, in these lines, we have the white feather on the tail of the bird. And white feathers historically have connotations of surrendering. So it's almost like the bird is trying to tempt him to give up on his adventure. 
which again goes into this this whole theme again because perhaps the bird is trying to tempt him to go back to safety go back to his house um and the narrator's having none of it (laughs) he's creating his own path he's carving out his own journey and then there was a pile of wood for which i forgot him and let his little fear carry him off the way i might have gone without so much as wishing him good night he went behind it to make his last stand here we get even deeper into this being derogatory towards the bird because the narrator diminishes his fear saying oh his little fear and he instantly disregards him when he sees this pile of wood and it's significant that when he dismisses the bird the bird goes off where i might have gone because again this plays into this whole idea of the guide and the journey because he's rejecting this guide who would have taken him perhaps the right way to go and instead he's carving out his own path he just wants to see what's out there and discover it for himself the words and then is like an interruption so it really gets across this idea that the speaker immediately disregards the bird when he sees the wood pile he doesn't even wish him good night in fact he just forgets the bird instantly and this really makes us intrigued about the wood pile because why would a pile of wood be more interesting than a bird who seems to be interacting with you and seems to be trying to get you to do something so yeah that sets up this suspense finally the bird makes his last stand behind the wood which is quite melodramatic really and i think again this is just trying to be quite ironic and just it's almost like sarcasm it's like oh he's trying to make his last stand but dude we've already forgotten about you (laughs) because he is behind the wood pile so He is pathetically trying to show off one last time, but he's already eclipsed by the more interesting woodpile. It was a cord of maple, cut and split and piled and measured four by four by eight. And not another like it I could see. No runner tracks in this year's snow looped near it. And it was older sure than this year's cutting, or even last year's or the years before. The wood was grey and the bark warping off it, and the pile somewhat sunken, Clematis had wound strings round and round it like a bundle. Lots of stuff to talk about with these lines, but the first thing to realise is that the narrator takes a long time to describe this pile of wood, where the bird only had a few lines. Maple is an expensive wood, not usually burned, but used for carpentry. So this could get across the idea of the wood being more valuable than it seems at first sight, or perhaps there's hidden meaning to the wood because it is piled up as if it's going to be burned and that's the context it's talked about in in the poem so there's just more of a sense of mystery and interest to the wood line 24 where the narrator says the pile was measured four by four by eight is very specific showing that the narrator has an awareness of rural habits so again we get to see that there's perhaps more to the wood than we might think you know lots of us who are coming from non-rural backgrounds we just think, yeah, it's a pile of wood, it's not interesting. But the narrator seems all this hidden depth in what seems to be an unextraordinary pile of wood. He even goes so far as to say there was not another like it. And that really contrasts with the conforming trees we saw earlier, which are identical, whereas this is unique to the narrator. Runner tracks means tracks of a sledge or sled, if you're American, <laughs> like Mr. Frost was. Then we have the word shore in line 27. It was older shore than this year's cutting. And this is something I really find interesting because the word shore contrasts with all the previous uncertainty we had before. You know, the narrator doesn't know where he's going. He's lost. He doesn't know what the bird wants from him, all this stuff. Whereas he's found some kind of solidity in this wood. He knows all about it. And it's something that he can tackle with his brain. He can really dig into it and find meaning in his head where everything else is quite ambiguous. The wood is also grey, which is like an old man. And maybe this alludes to the whole guide journey thing, because traditionally in hero's journey stories and that sort of thing, the guide is an old man. You know, sometimes it's a magical or natural creature like the bird, But I'd say traditionally it's an old man, so maybe it's saying that the wood pile, this is what's guiding him now. He's chosen the wood over the bird, 
it's perhaps a little bit of a stretch, but that, that would be pretty cool if that's what it's alluding to. Then there's clematis, which is a vine-like flower. And the way that this plant has wrapped around the pile of wood represents the narrator finding order hidden away in the confusing woods. So that's what I was talking about earlier when he finds this wood and suddenly there's so much interesting to him. There's so much to think about and he can actually make progress in his mind into what the mystery is. Like, this is still a mystery, like the bird was a mystery and what's in the woods is a mystery, but this is a mystery that he can dig into and actually potentially find answers for himself. What held it, though, on one side was a tree, still growing, and on one, a stake and prop, these latter about to fall. I thought that only someone who lived in turning to fresh tasks could so forget his handiwork on which he spent himself, the labour of his axe, and leave it there far from a useful fireplace, to warm the frozen swamp as best it could, with the slow, smokeless burning of decay. So here's where the poem starts to get quite confusing, although it probably was confusing before. I find this poem quite difficult to find a meaning behind, or like some kind of moral. I always like stories to have a clearly defined moral, but this one is just really difficult to figure out what Frost is trying to say. It's a story that's vaguely easy to follow, I find, but finding what it might be alluding to, trying to interpret it, is very difficult. But in the context of these lines, we could speculate that the tree represents faith, and it's holding up the wood pile, which represents humans. The stake is life on earth, which withers as heaven, or the tree, rises to take its place. Or the tree could represent nature, and the stake represents human inventions, and this is showing that nature is more powerful than humans, and human effort is futile. That's something that people talk about a lot in the context of this poem. I don't know, help me out here if you know what this poem means. <laughs> Just tell me in the comments and I'll I'll just let you run the channel. Um, no, okay. So, the wood warms the frozen swamp, which is actually gives quite a positive spin and brings some hope to this dismal image of the abandoned wood. The pile could be metaphorically warm because it gave the speaker some interest in the confusing wood. And this is reinforced by the oxymoron of smokeless burning, representing how it's not really burning, because to burn you do need smoke, so the burning is only metaphorical. And so the narrator has found meaning in the woodpile, where perhaps objectively there is no meaning, it's useless, but to him it does have a use. I want to say a quick word about the tone or the style of this poem. I think it has real atmosphere. So there's this quite fairy tale atmosphere that we've been talking about, this sense of adventure and danger and mystery. So this is shown through the day being grey, and perhaps foggy, and this frozen swamp. You know, fro things being frozen, covered in frost, it's, it comes across as glittery, and a swamp is something that is full of life, and is quite mysterious, and, and almost like quite impenetrable to people, I feel. So I just really get the sense of there being magical things there. Then we also have the snow, which is, again, very pretty, very sparkly, but it, it comes across as untrustworthy, like it's holding the man's boots, but only sometimes. So yeah, there's a sense of, you know, expedition and danger. There's the trees which surround him, so he doesn't know where, he's, where he is, it could be anywhere, it gives this sense that he could be in this magical world. And, you know, the trees are quite unhelpful because they all look the same and he doesn't know where he is. So again, sense of danger, sense of being alone. Um, the bird is suspicious of him and he's far from home. So overall, this gives a sense of the narrator being this hero up against the world. On the other hand, though, this is quite a simple scene when you break it down. Um, we're just in a forest, we're just in a swamp. It's just a grey weather day, you know. There's just trees around, it's just a bird. There's not necessarily anything magical going on. So I think this plays into the idea of the poem having a very thoughtful tone. It's very contemplating and it's quite psychological because, in my opinion, all this fairy tale stuff is built up in the narrator's head. 
and that speaks to this idea of things being more important and having meaning inside our heads like objectively a lot of the things that we see as huge events actually aren't that extraordinary aren't that special so maybe this keys into you know romanticism as compared to modernism so modernism would be like well it's just a guy walking through a wood and you know we got to see things for what they are and this isn't this big adventure but romanticism which is what frost supported i guess um a lot of his poems cover the themes of romanticism romanticism focuses on the individual on the mind on the imagination so yeah i guess this is quite romanticist in tone so the uh, the way that the narrator brings this whole meaning this whole adventure to a simple stroll through the woods represents how the wood pile which is just a simple pile of wood in in the woods um has all this meaning for the narrator so the poem is about finding meaning in simple things not getting too caught up in reality and not caught up in what the outside world world is telling you to do like the bird was like come on go back home um and rationally the narrator did think at the beginning oh i should go back but he didn't listen to that he was like no i think what i want to do is keep going and just see what i find and perhaps that's the moral of the story that you should just be adventurous and be a bit more experimental of life and you can find meaning in small things now i'm going to say a quick word about the form of the poem so there's actually only one rhyme in the whole poem and that is the rhyme of the the first line and the last line and the phrase frozen swamp is also repeated in the first line and then in the second to last line so it creates this circular nature of the poem and i think this serves to draw your attention when you finish the poem back to what happened at the start and what is really noticeable at the start is the only bit of dialogue in the poem which is when the narrator says i will turn back from here no i will go on farther and we shall see so that perhaps is the standout moment in the poem when he thinks to himself i could go back but i'm going to go further so once we've read the whole poem we can see the meaning that came out of the narrator deciding to go on so we can see that he's found this wood pile which has really made him think and perhaps giving given him some hope so the moral is you know if you want this cool meaning stuff to happen and you know to find something extraordinary or something that at least has meaning to you then you need to go out of your comfort zone go explore and be open to finding something unexpected then there is personification of the snow as untrustworthy when we say the hard snow held me this personification of the bird as quite suspicious he thought i was after him for a feather and he said no word to tell me who he was that just gives the sense of nature being alive around the narrator and him being up against it i suppose there's the skillful diction um of and then to start line what line is it line 18 um which sounds like an interruption so this is one of frost's sort of sound of sense things perhaps or just his technique in poetry of using everyday speech to get across emotions really relatably and like vividly so he uses something that we would probably say in conversation if we're like oh yeah i saw this bird and then i saw a woodpile yeah that gets across the idea of the woodpile being a lot more interesting than the bird then there's a little bit of contrast in the poem we have the woodpile um being not another like it in contrast to the conforming trees so again yeah some devices are used to try and get the woodpile to be distinguished from the nature around it and they just un uninteresting confusing stuff all around uh another example of this is when he says he's sure that the wood is quite old which contrasts just the ambiguity and the uncertainty of his other surroundings all right now let's dig deeper into just what the poem means so for me the main thing to realize about this poem is that it is about the psychological journey of the narrator 
His journey goes from being mentally lost and just wandering through life, not knowing what to do, to finding meaning for himself in small things. So we have already talked about the bird being suspicious, the weather being grey, the trees being unhelpful, the snow being untrustworthy, all these natural things um, and just all this stuff surrounding the narrator not really being on his side. So these things out of context are pretty normal, pretty unextraordinary, but when they're tied together in this theme, um, they create an atmosphere in the poem and a backdrop of great adventure. So as I said before, this demonstrates how the mind can distort things to a much grander or more important meaning than they actually have in reality. This is a poem about the mind. So one thing to realize is it doesn't matter why the woodcutter left the wood there in the first place. We're never going to find that out. The narrator was never going to find that out. What matters is how the narrator interprets it and gives it new meaning in his own life. So the narrator says about the woodcutter that only someone who lived in turning to fresh tasks could so forget his handiwork on which he spent himself. And that could be said to describe him as well. And it's similar to what he said about the bird. He said that the bird was one who takes everything said as personal to himself. And I think we can agree that that probably applies more to the narrator than it does to the bird. He sees the bird and he thinks, oh, it must be here for me. It must be my guide or something. So he seems to be projecting his own personality, his own emotions onto the bird. And it's perfectly reasonable to think then that he would do the same thing to the woodcutter. So again, this poem is not about the woodcutter. It's not about nature. It's not about the woodpile. It's about the narrator and what meaning he finds in this woodpile. So when he talks about the woodcutter, what's not really important is thinking, oh, what, what do you think the woodcutter was thinking? What's important is thinking, why is the narrator thinking this? So just like the woodcutter left behind his wood, the narrator left behind his home and the bird and everything familiar. He doesn't ever consider that the woodcutter just forgot the wood, which objectively is probably the most likely scenario. So we can see that he's projecting his own desire for adventure onto the woodcutter. So yeah, on the narrator's journey in this poem, we see him turn away from nature, which clearly, clearly has a mind of its own and is sort of unfathomable to the human mind. And instead he turns to something specific. Again, this sort of goes back to romanticism. Modernism is all about defining everything and everything being standard for everyone, whereas man romanticism tends to zoom in on more individual experiences. So the narrator turns away from all this stuff that he can't find meaning in that is confusing to him and he focuses on the woodpile. So the moral could sort of be to carve out meaning for yourself, um, be open to finding meaning and be open to being thoughtful about things that seem pointless. Like from a modernist's point of view, it's like, why are you just staring at this piece of wood? <laughs> like, this isn't productive. But the moral is to sort of let go of being productive and be more thoughtful. And because you never know what might be meaningful. You know, it is quite an ambiguous poem. You know, we don't really know what this meaning is that he finds in, in the woodpile. But maybe he's thinking about human effort and decay and death and that sort of thing. Um, so the woodpile, yeah, provides provides meaning for him where before he was so confused. Okay, so to pin down this discussion of meaning to one specific interpretation, a lot of people seem to think that this poem is about suicide. And I think that's definitely very likely. Um, and I think it goes with my whole confusion about what it means. Um, you know, what is this meaning that the narrator has found from the woodpile? If it is some kind of realization about why he should not kill himself, that's obviously a very deep topic and something very personal to Robert Frost. It's not something that just a casual reader of poetry um, is going to just pick up on and be like, oh yeah, he's just discovering, you know, why he shouldn't kill himself. Um, but we can sort of contemplate a little bit um, how he might be alluding to suicide. So when the narrator says he, he will turn back, that could be him deciding to give up on life and kill himself. Like, I'm going to turn away from this life and die. 
but he decides, no, I will go on farther. Um, then he says that he couldn't say for certain that he was here. So that represents how the narrator hasn't made his mark on the world. He's more interested in the woodpile than the bird, perhaps because it's dying. The bird is a sign of life. The bird represents life, which is something he's feeling very alienated from. Whereas the woodpile relates to what he's obviously thinking about a lot. He says that the wood is older sure than this year's cutting, which contrasts his previous uncertainty of where he is and what the bird is thinking. So this could represent how his life how life is too confusing, whereas death offers reliefs. Death is the only certainty of life, you know? This goes back to this being a poem about the mind. Suicide is something that happens because of someone's mental state. So the woodpile may be literally useless, as we've said, but to the narrator it's a source of hope that he can find order in this confusing world. The pile may not be providing heat, uh, literally, because it's smokeless, but it does warm the swamp to the narrator metaphorically. The tree that is holding up the pile represents faith and the narrator has sort of got that back um the the flowers that are wrapping around the pile represent order by looking at something so simplistic and unextraordinary and just paying attention to all the little details he's found how it can apply to his own life and give him meaning so uh, overall i would say if it is about suicide the poem seems to be telling the story of how yeah this guy found hope again and decided not to kill himself because he opened himself up to the meaning in life and stopped trying to contemplate um, the whole of life and the entire meaning of life and all that and just focused on something small and tried to think about how he could just have meaning in his own short existence and that has given him hope.